Today on the channel from Super 7 in Ultimate Edition Series 1 Transformers, we got Bombshell and Bonsai Tron. The spirit of the Welcome everyone, Kyle here. Welcome back to the channel for another Super 7 Ultimate Edition unboxing and review. And today from Transformers Ultimate Edition Series 1, we've got Bombshell and Bonsai Tron. But for all your Super 7 Ultimate needs and a whole lot more, hit up Entertainment Earth. Use the link in the description down below for 10% off all in-stock items and anything over $39.00. Guess what? It ships for free, and that's exactly what I did right here. Playing a little of that old Kyle Peterson patented long game on these as I got to get a deal. And I really like Transformers. I really like the idea of these Ultimates, as I've said before. Of course, we did unbox Optimus Prime on the channel a while back. Check out that review if you missed that. But uh, on Entertainment Earth, right now, currently as we're filming this, they have an outlet deal. Go to the outlet deal section of the website. They have Series 1 up there with a free diorama thrown in. $165 uh, for the entire wave. All four figures plus the diorama set. Got to get a deal all day long, but even better, you get to save 10% and get free shipping on top of that. That's what I had to do. I did get an extra Optimus Prime out of that. I'll probably sell it or maybe give it away on the channel. We'll see about that. But I had to swoop in, get these guys at a deal. Got to get a deal all day long. And these are some interesting ones. A little bit deeper cuts, I would say. Bombshell, maybe not totally, uh, but Bonsai Tron for sure. Very, very risky move for somebody like Super 7 to put Bonsai Tron in Series 1 of Transformers because you need to come out swinging, especially with something like Transformers that is so uh, tied to transformation. You better give us some of the heaviest heavy hitters in Series 1. And we did get Optimus Prime. We got Starscream, but the ghost of Starscream. And then we got these two. So to me, my, taking my business hat, step back, a little bit of a miss for Series 1. you got to come out of the gate swinging. I don't think they did that, but we'll see how these two do end up faring here on the channel here. And I know a lot of people don't like their Transformers that don't transform, but I've been looking for something like this for a long time, as you guys know. As I love Transformers going back to the old days when I was a little kid, of course. But in this day and age, I'm almost looking for something that doesn't transform. I don't want to go back and forth. And I get it. Transformers, they transform. These aren't going to be for everybody. So totally understand that as well. Uh, but we'll see. But we're going to do this review like we do all the other unboxings and reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. And I'm going to show both of these guys, unbox both of these guys off screen uh, because there's so many accessories and things like that. So let's start off, though, with Bombshell. I want to say a deep cut, but not the deepest of cuts here. Of course, an Insecticon. Uh, I remember him back in the day, and I always loved the Insecticons. I always had them feud with the Dinobots in my childhood playing days. But beautiful packaging here, of course. They got the purple over the top. Uh, they do have the cool slip covers, as we know, on these that we absolutely love. Uh, but very, very cool. I love the color combination between the purple and black tech. And then in the back, you get a little, oh, a chart, I guess, a chart kind of showing uh, what they can do, his level, his different levels, strength, intelligence, speed, endurance, rank, courage, firepower, skill, a bit of a bio card in some instances, but I would love a little blurb. You guys know me, like the Thundercats, we get a nice little blurb, put a little blurb for Bombshell, especially Bonsai Tron, you got to put one for him. But Bob Shell looks pretty good in the package here. Now we're going to go over to the deepest cut here. And I got to think uh, the slowest seller of the bunch, Bonsai Tron. Most people don't remember him. I don't even think he was in the cartoon. And if he was in the cartoon, it was way, way late at the end. I do, however, have memories, childhood memories of seeing his figure back in the day. And it was at a store called Pace. Anybody ever heard of a store called Pace? I think if my memory serves me well, like a young Bob Dylan, I was like six or seven years old probably. And I remember it being kind of like a Sam's Club or a Costco type store. Uh, I could be totally off. I still know where the location is. It was long closed. I mean, it closed 30 years ago probably. But I remember Pace. I remember seeing this. I don't remember ever owning this figure. So really know nothing about him. But he was bundled in the pack. You got to pick him up. And like I said, a deep, deep Transformers cut. I don't know if this was the wisest move on Super 7's part. Putting him in Series 1, I got to say. Uh, but there's old Bonsai Tron there. Very fluorescent -y colors. Of course, that uh, 80s Transformers green, we'll call that, of course. It reminds me of Devastator in all of his cohorts. But looking good in the package. Very similar packaging that we saw with Bombshell. And then the back, 
We get the uh, ratings and the stuff, the strength, the courage, the rank, the firepower, skill. He's a heavy hitter for sure for Decepticons, old Bonsai Tron. He's pretty highly leveled uh, where, let's see, Bombshell's kind of in the middle there except for skill. So interesting times, but let me take this offline. Let me get these guys out of the package, and we'll be back talking all things Super 7 Transformers. All right, we're out of the package. Let's get down to it. Let's start with Bombshell. Let's, as usual, start with the accessories with Bombshell here. Of course, we get a bunch of hands. Uh, Super 7 always gives us different hand incarnations. We get gripping hands here with the side-to-side -side hinge. Uh, two gripping hands right here. A little bit different, but basically the same. And then we get the two here the exact same way. So two sets of gripping hands. Choose your own hand adventure. And what's he got on him? He's got two fists of fury on him. I'm all for that all day long. You guys know that. Then we get a few accessories here. We get his backpack. I do like that it has a ball joint. I can see right here. And you can move it around, move this. Uh, kind of the horns. I don't even know what you call those in insects. But the uh, gripper things, you know, they catch crickets and eat them. Yeah, you play with me here. Uh, follow along. Uh, but you got that. But it almost looks like a little robot on itself. You can kind of have off to the side of him if you want. Or you can plug it into his back. Uh, you got the legs here in black. Again, of course, that Transformers 80s green color going throughout. Got nice sculpting throughout here. A couple of paint highlights probably wouldn't hurt, but that might go against the original flavor of these, maybe. So you do have that, but it does have, of course, the thing so you can plug it into his back. G.I. Joe backpack style on this. And like I said, nice ball joint on here, so you can rotate, move this around, choose your own adventure on that as well. So you have that. And then he does come with two weapons here that fit in his hands. Very, very big handles there. Are these even going to fit in the hands of him? Uh, boy, not in this one. Heck no. These are some, these are huge. So I'm going to have to work on that for the glamour shots. But boy, that seems awfully big. And these do not plug in anywhere that I see on him. So two big weapons. We'll see in the glamour shots if we can get those in his hands. I have to think we can. Uh, but very, very cool as far as weapons go. But boy, those handles are very big. But all one color gray, no highlights, no extra colors, anything like that. But very Insecticon-esque back in the day weapons. So that makes sense. Now we get to Bombshell here, and Bombshell was a childhood favorite of mine. Like I said, I always had my Dinobots, my Insecticons kind of battle it out. And I've talked before in some of the Transformers videos, I don't really want my Transformers to transform, as crazy as that is. Uh, I always did prefer them in robot mode, except for some. And one of those sums was, of course, the Dinobots. I always preferred them in their dino mode for whatever reason. And the Insecticons. I always preferred them in their insect, insect mode. Uh, and we don't get that with Bombshell here. So that is uh, disappointing a little bit. We do know we have Grimlock coming here fairly soon. And Grimlock will be in his dino mode, which I think makes a lot of sense. I wish Bombshell was the same. But that's just me. Choose your own adventure. What do you prefer? Do you prefer, uh, You probably most of you guys prefer be able to go back and forth. Do you prefer robots? or the vehicle mode more let me know in the comments but let's break down this bombshell figure all day long this does look like bombshell you do got the decepticon logo right there in the chest so you know exactly what side he's playing for if the purple and black and silver attack didn't tell you already uh, i do got the orange in there to really blur break up the colors then the orange feet the orange boots uh nice head with the green eyes of course he's got that I don't know what this is on top of his head. I always thought of it as like a camera and stuff, but he does have that. Head articulation, let's start with that. You do get fairly good side to side. It can't go all the way around, but you get more side to side than you would assume, and you do get up and down on him there. Uh, and then on the arms here. Now, the arms is where you kind of lose you. Of course, we did unbox Optimus Prime on the channel. Some issues there with some of the posability. And on this arm right here, you don't get a whole lot of movement. That's as far out as you can go. Uh, you're really stuck at the shoulders, but the arms do go all the way around for you. You do get the bend at the elbow. You do get a bicep cut, uh, a double bicep cut, really. You get a movement at the elbow, and you get movement at the top of the shoulder or at the top of the bicep. So you do get that hands side to side. Hands are removable. So you do get some play there, but it's really tough in and out on the arms. Now, of course, they are robots. They shouldn't be able to, you know, be Spider-Man. But at the same time, I think we need a little bit more range of motion on the arms there. I understand that might break up the sculpt a little bit, though. So uh, you got to play that dynamic as well. Uh, you do get waist articulation, so the waist does move. Now, the legs, much better. You get a nice ball joint here. Of course, you guys know, like McFarlane, I always hate the ball joints. 
These are a little bit noticeable, but not as bad as McFarlane in the ankles, for example. But you do get some good splits here, like a Spider-Man there. So a lot of movement there. You do get uh, side to side at the hip as well. So you do get some movement there. And then you get a big deep cut here. Uh, single jointed in the knee, but you do get a big movement there as well. And then the ankles up and down, a little bit side to side, but not a whole lot there. He should just stand on his own fairly good. Yeah, he does. But does he fit on a ringside stand just by the chance of it? Let's see. And he does. He fits on a ringside stand. So if you need stands for these guys for no reason, ringside collectibles, get the WWE stand. Use discount code Kyle. Save 10%. All of that usual business there. Uh, but an interesting one. And on the back, of course, you do get the plug in the hole for his backpack. We'll pop that bad boy in right now. And that pops in just fine. So you can't put that backpack. Gives a little bit more color as well. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think these fit in his back. No, they won't. They're way too big. Uh, but this does, gives him a little bit more personality, gives him a little bit more pizzazz, I guess, if you will. Uh, but not terrible, but not the best. A bit of a deep cut, as much as I like the Insecticons, a deep cut for Series 1. So I, I think this might be, all in all, a little bit of a misstep, and that's probably the reason you see this in Entertainment Earth right now on clearance. It'll be interesting where this Transformer line goes. I just don't know because I think the majority of the people aren't like me. They want their Transformers to transform. I want basically statues on my shelf looking like the G1, looking like the animated series, I should say. That's what I'm looking for. I want the animated series in robot form up on a shelf. And that's what I get with this. So to me, this works. But for the diehard Transformer fan, I can see how you could have some issues with this for sure. Uh, but there's Bombshell right there. Now let's turn our attention over to Bonsai Tron. Oh, Bonsai, like a young Mr. Fuji. And of course, once again, we do get hands. We get the old finger pointing hands. We sell these without Optimus Prime as well. Give it the old two finger salute. Got a little of that with the side to side. Got the horizontal and vertical hinges here. So we got gripping hands, open hands, uh, a nice claw hand. I like the looks of that. I'll probably end up using that one. Uh, but choose your own hand adventure, as we always say. We do get the very cool, this is uh, very iconic in the Transformers uh, lore. I always remember this weapon with the blade on the end of the rifle there. Very, very cool, like a G.I. Joe Crimson Guard member, but all black. Uh, no extra color or anything, but a very good sculpt in this. I do like the looks of this weapon here. And then we do get his little uh, deal here is... Was this like razor back, razor sharp, something like that? His little uh, smaller transformer that he came with back in the day. Uh, I figured at first this was going to be a backpack, kind of like Bombshell had, uh, but that is not the case. He does not fit on the back there. So he's just kind of a little spider crab like creature that can kind of go off to the side against him, it looks like. But he does have a plug there. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's coming together here. So he's got a little hole on the end of this gun. I have a feeling that goes there. Oh, look at that. Old Kyle figured it out here on the fly. So you can stick that in uh, the end here. You can put his weapon there. Make an even bigger weapon. And then he, do, he has two fisted hands. So I'm going to have to just grab one of these off to the side here. And I'm guessing, oh yeah, all day long, he can hold this. It just makes him a gigantic weapon. So you can uh, transform and combine these. A little combiner action if you are so inclined to put those together. So very, very good look here. I like the orange against the purple and black on this as well. I didn't didn't say that but interesting idea got to figure it out on the fly a little bit i'm glad i did figure that out now we get bonsai tron out here and like i said a deep deep cut a deep deep late day transformers uh, i was about out of transformers i was pretty much out of transformers by the time this guy came along i don't think he's got a lot of people remembering him fondly and uh an even deeper cut for series one than bombshell if you ask me so interesting i don't know if that's paid off for super seven in this uh instance here uh but a good looking one once again you get the orange black you get the 80s uh kind of devastator green going on which i do love that color and the orange against it uh even some purple mixed in of course the decepticon logo right up front there you cannot miss that uh his arms we got a lot more movement on this one than we had on bombshell i mean it's not tons and tons but you do get some more out and up and down and all around over there with the ball joints there it does look good uh so i do like the articulation a heck of a lot more on this than this one for sure same kind of elbows single jointed but you can do side to side back and forth uh, it looks like he does have a little bite. Yeah, he does got bicep cut, but it doesn't really help you a whole lot in this instance there. Uh, waist, of course, articulation. And once again, super splits. Super lo robot splits right there for old Bonsai Tron. Uh, and then you get the same knee joints, a little side to side, a little back and forth. You do get that. And then you get more articulation in the feet just because he's not hindered by the bottom like we saw with Bombshell there. 
Uh, but interesting one, I gotta say, probably my least favorite of Series 1 is gonna be Bonsai Tron because so much of my action figure, my action figure collecting goes off nostalgia and what I remember and what I liked. And like I said, I really have no memories of this guy outside of seeing him in the store once when I was a little kid and keep walking on by to the old G.I. Joe section. Uh, but very cool for some deep cut Transformers fans. Maybe that is something they were trying to do with Super 7 here in Series 1. Saying, hey, if we put Optimus in there, that gets that gets the casuals involved. But let's say that we're really into Transformers. Let's give a deep cut like this in Series 1 to say we're not messing around. That goes one or two ways. It can turn off an audience or it can really grab people in. And the verdict's still out if that worked for Super 7. We know Series 2 coming fairly soon. Uh, series 3 as well. And I think Series 4 only has three figures with a traditional star scream. I believe that's the case. I could be off of my series. But we'll see. I'm all in on these. I don't know how deep they'll go. I'm not sure if there's anybody else. I don't hear a lot of chatter on the old playground. Because uh, I hit the playgrounds asking the kids, what's going on out there, guys? I don't hear much chatter about this line. So I don't know if that's a good thing. But I am not deep entrenched into the Transformer circles. As a lot of you guys know, I love Transformers. Uh, but nobody wants to see me do Transformer reviews, trying to transform the robot. We'd be here all day. We're not going to do that. Uh, but I do like this for what it is. And even better, when you got to get a deal, I think that's how I'm going to play this going forward in the future. I'm going to wait for Entertainment Earth. Of course, that in-stock code, 10% off, free shipping. You've got to get a deal all day long. And I think that's my long game play. I'm going to wait for them to come in stock, then save 10% got to get a deal. I'd recommend that to you as well. Make sure you use that code in the link in the description below. But what say you on Ultimate Transformer figures all in, all out? Let me know your thoughts. And don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. We got videos every day, as you guys know. And you can see those videos even earlier if you are a Patreon member. Bonus content, exclusive content, early content, monthly giveaways. And best of all, you do support the channel over there on Patreon. And you can also support the channel by picking up a t-shirt. ProSingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And then don't forget about social media. Sir Paul 64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for Bonsai Tron and Bombshell, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.